Happy Wellness Wednesday. Um, I'm just going to be continuing on from what we were talking about last week, which was all about reducing food waste. So again, so much to cover in that topic, but one particular thing I touched on was how to store food properly so that it stays fresh longer. So I just got back from the farmer's market, which was a really fun adventure. Um, and I grabbed some great stuff. I also had some other produce at my house. So I just wanted to take you really quickly through some tips that I have for how to make sure your produce in particular stays good longer because this is going to help you reduce food waste because it's not going to go bad as quickly. You're not going to have to throw out as much produce. So really the number one tip for preventing produce waste and eliminating or reducing food waste is to buy the amount of food you're actually going to eat. Um, not only is this going to save you money in the long run, remember last week we were talking about the average family of four wastes between one and two and a half thousand dollars a year on food that's gone bad and they've thrown it away. Um, so you'll save money, but then you also get to enjoy the food that you actually buy, um, especially while it's fresh. Um, so a couple of the things we touched on last week include like how to store berries properly. So definitely one thing you want to remember is you want to avoid rinsing your berries before you are going to eat them because when the moisture gets on there and they're in the fridge, it's a really good environment for mold to grow. So if you keep them dry, just rinse them right before you're about to eat them and that's ideal. I was also reading that some people recommend giving them a little bit of a vinegar bath. Um, I'm not a fan of that because I don't like vinegar with my berries, but if you do plan on rinsing them ahead of time, rinsing them with a little bit of vinegar, from what I understand, can prevent the molding process. Hey, thanks for saying hey. Yeah, when you get here, say hey, let's hang out. Tell me where you're from. Um, I'd also love, like, if you guys have to chime in, like, what is one food that you constantly find yourself throwing away or that's going bad? Maybe we can brainstorm some tips on that. Or what are some tips that you have for keeping produce produce fresh that I might not share today. Um, so, but tip number one, rinse your berries right before you eat them um, and that'll help them stay fresh longer because they won't get moldy. Um, another tip for, let's see, where are we going to go? Water. Water is going to be your best friend when it comes to these delicate herbs. I have some basil here, cilantro, but this also works for foods like asparagus. Um, you want to store them with the ends, tr ends trimmed and just a little bit of water in a glass in the fridge. This is going to keep them hydrated so they don't get like wilty. And again, they'll stay fresh longer and you can get more use out of them. But again, you can do this for herbs. Uh, again, the delicate herbs like cilantro, basil, parsley, um, but also asparagus as a vegetable. Interesting tidbit. You can do that with asparagus too and it keeps it kind of upright and crisp and fresh. Foods that um, you'll want to store separately that might help each other over ripen too quickly include tomatoes which also to keep tomatoes tasting the best we want to store them outside of the fridge when they're stored in the fridge they get kind of pilly and like um gross and weird i don't know if you've ever had that experience where you're like oh it's like they're like little tomato crystals in there you want to keep your tomatoes stored out of the fridge some places i was reading uh recommended storing them upside down so i guess the theory there is that you lose moisture through the stem and if you keep the stem side down um it doesn't lose as much moisture I don't really pay attention to that. I just make sure I store them on the counter and I eat them when they are about to get ripe. So you wanna keep your tomatoes fresh, especially when you have some like really delicious heirloom tomatoes like that. Other foods that can cause uh, each other to ripen too quickly, bananas. Um, so funny fact, so you wanna store bananas outside of the refrigerator as long as possible because when you put them in the fridge, the skins turn brown. I don't know about you, but I just don't like looking at that. Um, but if your bananas are starting to get ripe, then you can pop them in the fridge and that'll help slow down the ripening process. You do wanna store them away from other foods because they do cause other foods to ripen. However, I have used the trick where my avocados are ripening fast enough, so I put them in the bag with the, <laughs> with the bananas and I think it helps speed up the ripening process. Um, so yeah, store bananas in their own space. Uh, same with apples. Apples have a gas or off gas ethylene, I think. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. That might not be the right way you pronounce it, but uh, it, ethylene I think is a common gas that many uh, produce items will emit. And that is what um, em enhances the ripening process and like speeds it up. So apples are also something you wanna store separately and fruits and vegetables in general can go in the crisper drawers in the bottom of your fridge when we do keep them in the fridge. Remember, we wanna keep the tomatoes out. Um, these things can be stored in the fridge. Apples can be stored in the fridge because again, it helps slow down the ripening process. Um, what else? What else? So I pulled out an avocado because I wanted to bounce into some tips on how to keep things from browning. So avocados, apples, 
pears, any kind of food like that that you're gonna cut open but maybe not eat all of it. Or if you wanna cut apple slices for yourself or your kids, you wanna do it ahead of time. Um, a little bit of lemon juice on there. The acid from the lemon pre prevents the skin of the food from oxidizing, so it's not gonna turn brown. It'll be more aesthetically appealing. Um, and again, like especially when it comes to feeding kids stuff, we know they're super picky, so you wanna make it look as pretty as possible. Um, let's see, what else? I was reading some really good tips on a bunch of different things. Like there's so many different hacks. Um, storing your lettuce and like your spring greens, I don't have any on hand right now, but storing spring greens in a Tupperware container that is lined with paper towels. Um, the paper towels will help absorb the moisture so again the leaves won't get moldy or weird and storing them in a Tupperware container means they're not going to get crushed. Um, I don't personally eat a ton of salad so I don't keep salad greens around the house but it is a really good tip for people who want to keep a, like a lot. I have a friend who literally buys a garbage bag full of lettuce from the farmer's market every Sunday and he just keeps it in his fridge um, and so if he had Tupperware containers he could really prevent it from getting crushed but he goes through it really quickly so I think he'll be fine. Um, so again there's so so many different tips. Mushrooms can be kept in um, a brown paper bag in the refrigerator. The brown paper bag will absorb the moisture so the mushrooms don't get slimy and weird. Um, but you also want to keep in mind that when you're getting fresh produce, you want to buy as much as you're going to eat. That was our first tip that we covered. Don't overbuy. Um, and eat it within a reasonable amount of time. I think three to five days, generally speaking, is a good time frame to try to consume a majority of the produce. And though some things stay good longer, you know, apples stay good for longer than five days, avocados take for freaking ever to ripen sometimes. So you don't have to be too, um, specific with the date. Just keep in mind what you have in your refrigerator so you remember to eat it. That's the key. And if you do have a bunch of things on hand, like I was at the farmer's market today, if you guys saw my um, Instagram story, it's the end of peach season. So people are like stocking up on peaches, but I'm sure they're not gonna eat them all at the same time. Enter canning. Um, so I just started getting interested in canning and I just made this stuff yesterday. It is um, a pepper jelly because I had a bunch of poblano peppers. I get a produce delivery once a week in addition to supplementing from the farmer's market. Sometimes I forget to like customize my box so I ended up with like a ton of these peppers and I was like what am I gonna do with these? I don't really know. Um, but growing up in the south I remembered we had this really awesome dish, pepper jelly. And I was like huh, I wonder if I could like make some of that. And I found a recipe made it without refined sugar. So as I uh, perfect this technique, I'll definitely be sharing more with you guys. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna claim to be an expert at canning. I'm very new to this, but I will tell you that this entire recipe, I made a few jars of it yesterday. The entire thing took me an hour from start to finish from cutting up the peppers, getting them ready, creating the, the jam, and then canning it. So I think when I think about canning, I'm like, oh, it has to be this like huge labor intensive process. And um, you know, it's stuff that like our great great grandmothers used to do. And it doesn't have to be that complicated. It doesn't have to take that much time. And um, it can be like modern and fun. Because <laughs> now I have pepper jelly to share and I'm gonna share the recipe with you guys a little bit later. But again, if you're gonna stock up on produce and you're not gonna be able to eat, eat it all in an amount of time that is reasonable, then you can always consider canning or freezing. Um, certain foods freeze really well. So for example, tomatoes don't freeze well. Bananas freeze okay, but remember they're not gonna look like an actual banana afterwards. You're gonna use them more for baking. Um, apples don't really freeze. So I think when we're thinking about freezing, things like berries. So if you're gonna stock up on berries over the summer, you can pop them. And <laughs> um, yes, I do breathe, Rory. Thanks for checking on me. I appreciate your concern. Um, so yeah, berries in the freezer, great for smoothies. You can stock up on a bunch of those over the summer. Um, produce that freezes really well, you can definitely blanch your produce first. So if you do have things like carrots or broccoli that are gonna go bad, um, you can blanch them and then freeze them and that's the best way to keep them looking fresh. So freezing, canning, and storing properly are gonna be three ways that you can reduce food waste because again we want to take advantage of the food we buy so buy a reasonable amount and store it properly there are certain things that you're going to want to keep separately so like tomatoes bananas apples should all kind of be in different places or else they're going to accelerate the ripening process i think that's the word i was trying to think of before they're going to accelerate the ripening process of the other produce around them don't rinse your berries until you are about to eat them and store things like delicate herbs, like basil, cilantro, parsley in a little bit of water in the fridge. You can also do that with asparagus. Um, yeah, just so many great tips, and I would love to know what tips you guys use for extending the life of your produce or making sure you get the most out of it, or if there's something that you feel like you have trouble with, you buy it and then it always goes bad too quickly, 
let me know and we can brainstorm. Um, so that's it, that's all folks. Have a beautiful day. There is still good summer bounty left, so get to your local market and figure out a way to make it work. Have an awesome day. Let me know questions, comments, concerns, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>